Tony Jones here, Rhode Island Free Radio, online at rifreeradio.org. We are broadcasting live from the Fat Squirrel. It is Providence, Rhode Island. My old pal, Pat the P.O., taxpayer Ford, from the Coalition, online at coalitionradio.us. He is here, and of course, we are at the Cannabis Meetup, the second Cannabis Meetup now. Pat, last time we did one of these, for the first time in Coalition history, I had to click on the explicit content button when I published your podcast. So in other words, I need to refrain from saying, fuck you, Gina Raimondo. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that ever again. Was it the fuck? Was it the you? Was it the Gina or the Raimondo part? Hey, hey, listen. You found offensive. Let, let's oh, be I didn't find it offensive whatsoever. Let, let's be nice to Gina. Let's really, I mean, let's really give the big fuck you to who who needs it. Jim Skeffington and yeah. company. Let's all raise our, a, a, a our glasses. To Skefco. <laughs> to Skefco. <laughs> to Skefidomics. And if you're a Simpsons fan, you'll understand this reference. Monorail. 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 <laughs> it was a uh, tumultuous week in Coalition Land, wasn't it, Tony Jones? Well, you know, I mean, you have your loyal shut-in listeners... Who are awake at your given time slot, and <laughs> you got them Meeting all riled not up. Meeting not you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you got them all riled up. Well, you know we um, we seem to have um, I don't know touched a raw nerve here in Rhode State government. Uh, folks be folks be freaking about dropping 120 million large on a on a stadium that no one's going to go to. We call it Skeffonomics, which of course is the art and the science of investing massive quantities of governmental money into a declining AAA ballpark, <laughs> while at the same time surrounded by inordinate poverty, broken schools, declining infrastructure, and essentially a general sense of malaise. Is that? Am I being cynical, Dave? Uh, n- no, I don't think that's cynical at all. I think that's realism. <laughs> right. There are those... Though, there are a few handful of people there that seem to think that we're vilifying, turning Mr. Skeffington... It's a sort of a Rhode Island version of Snidely Whiplash. <laughs> hmm. Or C. Montgomery Burns. Montgomery Burns. Or Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, folks? All right. Which, which are, I mean, sort of the Saddam Hussein of Rhode Island? Of Rhode well, Island's I don't think he's going to gas anybody to get his way, but yeah, we're approaching Saddam there, Hussein. There, there, there. Funny at all sorts of things. Vast campaign contributions to the ruling elite who claim to be progressive. Uh, we're finding out that his law firm is simultaneously the law firm for the I-195 while at the same time trying to be the law firm for his own personal interests, which of course doesn't Anyway, you know, so and, and and to quote a certain Michael Douglas character, greed is good, I guess. When is <laughs> I enough? I was going to go with falling down. I'm going to see my son. <laughs> I, I I will usually refer to the uh, the scene in the hamburger joint. All he what, what was it? All he wanted was, <laughs> 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 yeah. Again, when when is enough enough? This gentleman and I use that term loosely, (laughs) has spent a lifetime, a lifetime, making his personal fortune on the backs of Rhode Islanders. And yet, somehow we're not supposed to vilify that? Well, and and the thing is, you know, people are vilifying us for, for the personal attacks against these folks. And my argument is, how can we not caricaturize them when they've already made characters of themselves. Well, and, and you know, if, if someone broke into your apartment, and let's just say you'd scrimped and saved to get one of those new flat screen TVs, and, you know, about a month after you got it, you were getting cozy, you had your man cave going on, <laughs> all right? God only knows what doing what. But all of a sudden, someone broke in and stole it. You'd, you'd take that poisonally, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit, yeah. 
So this guy's okay because he wears an expensive suit, which, by the way, we fucking paid for. <laughs> well, right, and he, he doesn't fleece individual people. He, fle <laughs> he, he fleeces the entire population. <laughs> right. This guy is a one-man financial... He's, he spreads the love, right. if you will. This, this guy is a one-man financial genocide. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Hootsie, Kootsie? Well, uh, you know, you know I, I put it on, on the blog this week, and, and I think this is a great way to put it. You know, do these people have, do they think that we've succumbed to economic sc Stockholm Syndrome, <laughs> and we're beginning to identify with our financial captors? Right. Well, here's the ironic part. We do owe Skefco, Skefonomics, Big Jimbo, we do owe him one debt of gratitude. Because what this individual has managed to do in one fell swoop in a matter of a few weeks is wipe away 20 years of mutual mistrust between warring clans of political activists. And we are veritably singing our own fucking version of We Are the World. Strange we are checking, bedfellows once we, again. We are checking our prejudices, our petty squabbles, our years of illogical grievances at the door. And we're saying, you know, progress... Monday afternoon, you got the potential to see the head of the Tea Party standing on the same stage or the same slice of pavement as a gentleman who runs Dare. You've got the potential to see the Republican Party chilling with Greg Garrett. Wait, there's still a Rhode Island Republican Party? We're Just don't ask nice. Newberry. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're taking it upscale this week, all right? <laughs> Notice I'm not making any Doreen Costa jokes, okay? So, I mean... They've managed to Wait, didn't you just make a Doreen Costa joke? Oops. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think she's listening. Anyway, I, you know, you've got a degree of political unanimity not seen in this state in generations. You know, the, 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 the oppressed, which is everybody besides Jim Skeffington, <laughs> you know? So there's 900, in his mind, there's 900. In people. Okay. <laughs> Understand that for the Jim versus Jim Skeffington. For the Jim Skeffingtons of the world, you are not an individual. You are not a citizen. Right. You are simply an object with a barcode, and the whole point is for you to be scanned into the great card reader in the sky that Mr. Skeffington operates. You are not an individual. You are a revenue opportunity, all right? Waiting to be cashed in at the altar of Skeffco. <laughs> that's what you are, Dave Fisher. Yeah, it's that's right. You are. It. You are merely input output. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, and, 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 you know, one of my big issues this week uh, has been the idea, for the people who are in support in any way of putting this stadium in Providence, and we touched on it on the show last week, you know, there, there are opportunities for Pawtucket outside of AAA baseball, okay? This, right. McCoy will not remain fallow for long. Given the the resurgence of 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 double A and under baseball across New England across the country, it's not going to happen. But my problem, my biggest problem, aside from the hundred twenty million dollar state tax dollar outlay to Skefco and the stadium, is it is indicative of the the failed Providence centric economic development plan that this state continues to cling to that has cost cities like Woonsocket, Pawtucket, Central Falls, rural communities like Situate, Gloucester, has cost them in the long run. And and I think that, that this just has to stop. We can't just put everything cool in Providence because we might as well rename the state Providence and Plantations because the rest of the state is being sold into economic slavery. Right. Exactly. Now, you, 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 in a sense, you've got this flat earth society, except in this case, Providence is the flat square. And on the edges, you've got barely holding on to life cities like Mooney, cities like the Bucket, cities like Seattle, who are, you know, despite... Despite the best efforts of the ruling regime, the Alorza Istas, if you will, of the world, who see nothing but a, sound nothing like but a gigantic vacuum cleaning, sucking the fiscal, the moral, the philosophical, the financial health out of the rest of the state. It's, it's, it's astonishing to watch. It's like you're inhabiting your own personal driver's ed movie, except you wake up from the stupor and realize that you're in the passenger seat, you know, about to hit the guardrail. It's, 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 it's somehow enervating. 
self-effacing and disgusting at the same time. Well, you know, and I'm reminded of that wonderful Dead Kennedy song, California Uber Alice, <laughs> right? Now it is 1984. Knock, knock at your front door. It's the suede denim secret police, and they have come for your uncool niece. <laughs> but, to quote the theme song of the coalition, despite their best efforts, you might try to kill the protest, huh. but you can't kill the protest, can you? No, Which, you by the way, anti-flag is coming to town in a few weeks' time. You can kill the protester, but you cannot kill the protest. Anti-flag will be in this very city in a few weeks' time at Simon 677, mere steps from Iron Horse Way. We, we get them to play the protest. That would be awesome. Can we do that? <laughs> Do we have the juice to do that? <laughs> I think we're still trying to find the juice to run a couple microphones, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, folks, if, you, if, if somehow the major media trips over themselves and walks seven to eight feet away from the meeting on Monday, you'll see our hearty little band. And um, if, if we resort, if you see megaphones, it's not because we're trying to make an outre scene Old out school. of a post, you know, post-50s protest. It's that's all we could really swing. <laughs> now you know? in Providence, you are supposed to procure a permit to run a megaphone, so you could run into some problems. Well, you know, I think the point of what we're doing on Monday is less of, um, you know, a traditional press conference. We want people to come down and and protest and say, you know, enough. You know, the, these are the the. These are the conservative business leaders who rant and rail against the, quote, welfare state when it comes to social programs, but are more than willing, more than willing, to sit back and try to fleece the taxpayer of this state out of 120, 124, 200, 500, like whatever they can get. They're willing to take the welfare on that scale, but somehow, you know, the mother of four trying to pay for food on the table for her kids is the problem. It's socialized baseball. Yeah. And and I would rather see I would rather see the state buy the paw socks for twenty five million, which would be a five million dollar profit for the new ownership team. They just paid twenty million for the team. And we, the people of Rhode Island, own the Pawtucket Red Sox. I think that would put more asses in the seats at McCoy. Especially if we made the state reps go out there and play ball. Hey, how about this? And this is coming from a libertarian. And if we could go out there and bean them. <laughs> <laughs> how about this coming from a libertarian? Can we declare eminent domain on the Pawtucket Red Sox? <laughs> Ugh, I don't know. Do we, do we emotionally own the Pawtucket Red Sox? I'm a Yankees fan. I wouldn't know. Oh, Pat. Now, is, oh, there, Pat. is there a fanboy aspect to this like there was for 38 Studios? Now, you guys all know that I'm not a sports guy. Uh, and especially, I just find baseball uh, terribly boring. Is there a fanboy aspect to this like with 38 it, Studios? It, you think? it definitely has the potential to kick in uh, during Monday's meeting because allegedly Larry Lacchino, who is the president of the Boston Red Sox, will be appearing at this meeting. Are they going to kiss his ring? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I, I assume that, you know, every every hack, you know, you know who may own a pizza jet parlor in Coventry, Rhode Island, just hypothetically, of course, will be looking to suck emotional <laughs> face with him. From, from the media standpoint, I mean, you know Ian Donis from Rhode Island Public Radio is going to be like salivating that Larry Lacchino is in Providence because he's – I mean, and I understand that. I mean, I'm not a sports guy either, but I'll tell you something. I went to my first game at Fenway at four years old. Being a Red Sox fan is almost genetic for me. I was at McCoy last weekend, and I'll tell you right now. I had a great time at McCoy. I took my nieces there. I, I was talking to my nieces about – how the game of baseball is played. Did they and, stay awake during that? Oh, they, they, I mean, <laughs> they were awesome. You know, uh, me, me and my, my friend, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we thought the girls wouldn't make it through four innings. We made it to like the eight and a half inning. Grant, granted, the girls were like shoving popcorn down my shirt in the <laughs> sixth. But, you know, they had a good time. And on the way home, I was quizzing them on, on you know, okay, 
how many